Welcome to the Kinkazoi Podcast, where you get some education on your form of stimulation. With your hosts, Royal, Chase, and Trey Proper. Buckle your seatbelts because it's going to be a wild ride. Let's get kinky. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to another lovely episode of Kinkazoids. It's your boy, Trey Proper, the four show phenom. We're about to bring you some nice. Uh, good, entertaining, fun tonight. Thank you for joining us. As always, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get right into it. I want to introduce, go ahead and introduce yourself, my lovely co host. Look, last week, we, last week we did it at the same time. Now, neither one of us are doing it. <laughs> um, the usual order is Miss Royal first. Okay. And then Ms. Who's up in Chagro Royal? <laughs> no tagline needed. Just recognize she's a queen. Ooh, okay. Right. Right. <laughs> this week. Okay. What's going on? It's your girl Chase. matter how you say it, as long as that flick. Alrighty, alrighty. Let's get right into it. So uh, we're gonna start things off with our favorite, our selected position of the week. Uh, this one is a, it's a, it's a showstopper. It's definitely a showstopper. It can end up well or it can end up very badly if you don't do it right. It is none other than the butter turner. <laughs> Yes, and if you can look at it, you can see the pictures coming up on the screen because our producer's putting them up right now. Yeah, I chose this one. I selected this one. So it's not necessarily, you know, so we had a little a little disagreement off the air uh, in our production meeting when I brought this one up because the lady said that it's not BBW friendly. I disagree. I think that this one is, you're capable of performing this move as long as you have the proper prep time. Yeah, do it in there. So, uh, of course, proper <laughs> you prep are time. to... Yes, so you are to place your 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 partner, the bottom partner, on their shoulders, not on their neck, but on their shoulders as they're upside down, and of course you penetrate from above. Now, in order to make this BBW friendly, I would recommend doing on the edge of the bed of the couch and also having plenty of pillows placed behind them. And they're actually leaning onto the bed or onto the pillows, and then you get to work. Um, you can do it facing them, so you can look down and enjoy the work that you're putting in, or do it away if your girl has a tendency to want to hold on to things behind you. So, uh, ladies, what are your thoughts in this position? Um, yeah, I'm not finna break my vertebrae for nobody. Um, that, that is, part. that's one thing. My spinal cord matters to me. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't think I need to be put in a neck brace at all. Uh, like we said, it can be BBW, BHM friendly, depending on how you do the position. You can use a couch, a sofa, a bed as some type of backing. If you're able to deadlift a bunch of weight, do what you got to do. Um, but I, I, uh, uh, yeah, no, cannot see me doing this. Now, I already have a problem with missionary breathing with a stomach and, and two double D's on the chest. Can't, no, can't be upside down doing all that. Okay. So again, you're not necessarily upside down and nobody's lifting. This is basic. It's a, it's a butter turner. You're going up and down. You're, you're power driving. To keep myself from being. You wouldn't have to. Okay. You're going to lean. It's basically like you're doing a hands. You're doing the bottom end of a handstand, and you're leaning your pelvis, your backside, onto the couch or bed, and you're supported by a pillow. So you're laying there. And oh, the wow. best, the best place to do it is one of our toys from the past, the Liberator, because you can actually lay upside down and allow him to do all the work. So this is actually pretty good for you. Okay. All so as I'm speaking as somebody I, who's I, done I, this, I, I've been in this position before. Okay. And it's not necessarily the most fun position, not for a BBW. I'm sorry. I have to say in my personal opinion, because for one, like Che said, you already suffocating when you have, you know, big chest and then you got the stomach mm -hmm. and then, you know, you got a lot to maneuver. And then it's the getting out of this position for me. You understand? Like it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not an easy feat, not for a BBW. Well, checking out the comments, I do have some people who agree with me. Uh, Ms. Jackson actually says, as a BBW, I fully support this position in all puns intended. Um, Herb Gattrell, <laughs> it's the gift for me. <laughs> I know. Like it that. was the gift for me too, Herb. <laughs> it was the gift for me too. Miss Payne, I feel like so much can go wrong here. Hello. Um, but it, I, in, um, in my opinion about this position, it really comes down to trusting your partner and allowing uh -huh. you, you. This is definitely one of those. We've been together for about five years. I'm not going to do anything to hurt you. You know you can trust me fully and implicitly. So allow me to take control of the situation and do what I have to do and let me have my fun. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so uh, let's move on down the list. Uh, in the comments, 
tell us if you like it, if you don't like it, either way. Um, special, special spotlight. So we, of course, have the Discord that we've been having a lot of fun on, and I feel we have to make this announcement again. I know that it's been said before, but no personal pictures in the Discord. Uh, share established individuals who are of spicy content creators, but do not share anything personal. And don't steal anything from anybody's accountant page, if you know what I mean. So it's we're all fun and games there. You want to share things, you want to do that, that's all fine and dandy. But be respectful to people's content and people's privacy. Mm -hmm. All right. Now... We got to get into our toys of the week. We didn't get freaky with me. Now let's get freaky with y'all. What toys you got? Oh, Chase, you want to start? I can start. So my a toy, of, you guys know I'm a big fan of Satisfier. Um, well, there is a new Satisfier called Breathless. It is uh, retailed for $69.99 and described as Breathless is your new best friend. This revolutionary vibrator blends two different sensations of pulsing and vibrations, bringing the clitoris in an A plus O. This is one of Adam and Eve's hottest and most effective toys with the added benefit of being pocket-sized and pretty quiet. It doesn't get better than being Breathless. So, um... It's in my, it's on the way, okay? <laughs> that's all they have. You they this one, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, basically, with when it comes to any section or any satisfy or any uh, clitoral sucking vibrator, it basically gives that sensation just like you had, like, the Royce, the Rose um, toy that I think Royal had went over um, a couple of episodes back. Um, it's basically something that just kind of just sucks in or pulsates type, different type of vibrations on it and has different levels. And, um, yeah, it's pocket size. It's travel friendly, okay? So <laughs> that's all you had to say. Can you control it with your phone? You cannot, unfortunately, it's not one of our tech toys of the week. <laughs> um, but, you know, who's to say that somebody else can't control it, you know? And if you put hey. your hand there, they will tell you to remove it very quickly. In person, is always best. <laughs> okay. All right. Ms. Royal. Okay, so this week I did the wearable panty vibrate, vibrator. Excuse me. So... Pretty much is in the title. This is a discreet toy that you can wear in your underwear. Okay. And it is controlled by a remote control that is controllable by up to 15 meters away. So you can give it to your partner and, you know, y'all can get your little public play on. It has. Oh, talking shit, huh? Talking shit. Talking shit. Yes. That's like in 27. You talking to your mom on the phone? Hi, mom. When they were at the table. <laughs> oh, that was, I would, that was, that's my biggest fear. I could never. I, I couldn't never. Control. And you know what? I can't say I can't never. I could, I could, can't say that because I'm about to put this in my cart. Like, for real. I, I need, I need this in my life. Because it has like um 12 different vibration patterns. Okay. Love and, like, yeah, and love to see it. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's powerful. It's quiet. It's waterproof. So, you know, Ooh. have a little Shout bit of fun out. with okay. that one. All right. All right. That, yeah, that's it. I'm definitely interested in that one. That looks like hella fun. I just need the app on my phone so I can be at work. Well, I can't do all them slinging packages, but when I take a break, I can just have a little fun. All right, so I guess it's my turn. I do have a toy this week. I usually don't have them because there aren't many options out there for men, but in recent years, they have the, the resurgence of the masturbators. This one is the Alexi Express Magic 3D Masturbator is fully silicone, and it is basically in the shape of a bust. Um, now, personally, I selected this one because I am interested in one. I'm a single man, but at the same time, I don't know how I would explain that to a young lady if she's coming over the house to chill and that joint is sitting in my closet. But, you know, you just got to have uh, great communication, like I always say. Uh, the retail price is actually $359. So uh, it has all the bells and whistles. It does vibrate. It does... Uh, have interior pockets for lubrication. So, yeah, it does all the things that you would need it to, but I don't know about that price. Also, uh, I'm actually going to poo-poo this one also because the size is a little smaller than I would want. I, If I'm going to get something like this, I kind of want to... I want two watermelons is what I want. So I need to get that little pushback a little bit or something. Yeah, yeah. So, But I, I'm, I'm still on the fence about it. The price tag and the actual size of it is throwing me off a little bit, but I'm those are expensive about the price tag. That shit is expensive. Y'all be talking about me. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, I actually went. I actually went did did a little research on toys. So you know, toys for guys, 
And figured I'll put something out there for you guys. Yes, that's damn 360. (laughs) So, yeah. All right. Now that covers our kinks. Uh, No, actually, doesn't cover our kinks. Doesn't cover our kinks. My bad. As he takes another shot. That makes it better. Just three. Anyway, uh, Uh so one thing that we have forgotten to talk about. You, You have a small cut. Anyway. (laughs) <laughs> hey, it's a strong, um, small cup, okay? Don't worry about what I'm doing. What you, what, what, you, what you drinking? Who, me? Me? Yes, what are you drinking? I'm drinking so, Crown. Apple. Crown what? Apple. That is... Good stuff. Anyway. All right. <laughs> you just played so, it. Damn, yes, that's a lot yes, of I shit. I really that's why it's so strong. So, I'm sorry, y'all. So, my... <laughs> our resident bartender, have do sir mix my drink for me so um i got some captain i got some jameson i got some black and what else and j and jim beam and coke you you can't even put you can't even put one of the little umbrellas in that joke because that bitch a catch fire yep So you, job, told me, you told job. me you want you wanted me to catch up. I'm catching up. Hey, catch up. Come on with it. Just don't say nothing crazy. All right. So um, but I, no what, I was, what I was saying, I'm sorry. I do, no I do digress. Uh, so uh, uh, the last couple of weeks that we've been doing the show, we've actually forgotten to do a segment, and we're going to introduce it right now. And it's basically our personal kinks. We are going to go over our do's, our don'ts, our hard no's, and our hard yeses. So uh, I'll go first, actually, for once, ladies. I'll go first with my hard no's, and I think it's kind of obvious if you know me personally. Uh, My first hard no is pegging. That is a kink that I'm actually not into it. I'm not not into being anally stimulated at all. I understand that it can be very pleasurable pleasurable for men, but it's just not my cup of tea. Uh, Now, my second one is actually come play. Uh, Not come play. I'm sorry. I do apologize. Come regifting. So if you're not familiar with this term, this is basically a situation where a male will ejaculate onto or into a female, and she gathers it up and redistributes it to him. I'm not a fan. So those are my hard no's. No, I'm thank not you for me. No, thank you. No, thank you at all. All right. Now, um, will you go? Will you guys go around the panel and mm-hmm. tell us your hard no's? Uh, Chase, would you like to go first? So the kink that I am into is BDS. Hard nose, hard nose, hard, hard nose. nose. Hard nose would definitely be that whole like smushing thing that like there's like that that big plus size fetish of like smushing. Oh. I'm smushing, but he's okay. like, I don't, want, I don't want to breathe, sir. I'm not going to jail. Okay, so we're not doing that. If you have a really big fetish of that, just leave me out of that. Yes, Trey. I'm sorry, but you know you do understand that that. That requires a level of, of of communication, like we always preach here. And you definitely want to establish your signals. If he can't communicate, he still has hands, so two smacks, I can't breathe. You know, you just have to have a communication with him. Yeah, my communication is I'm not doing that. Right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Nobody can force you. Nobody can force you. Right, right, right. All right. Did you, did you have another hard no? Did I have another hard no? Um, that spit thing? that they do in the back of the throat when they be telling you to open your mouth and then they, yeah, Just no. Just spit play. Okay. No, uh, yeah, nope, mm-mm, no, nope, nah. No, thanks. You that's not, not, not my son, not, not part of my brain. religion. That's not something, nope, mm, yeah, keep that to yourself, baby. Nope, right. thanks. Fair enough. Totally um, fair, totally understood. Real quick before I go, thank you, Melody Cardoza, for the share. Oh, what's up, big man? Hey, check out Melody Cardoza. She actually does a lot of uh, crochet stuff. And she's got really good content out there, so go check her out. That's what's up. All right. Okay. Okay, so to my hard no. So my hard no is fisting. Cause I'd be damned if I let somebody put something this size to their ri- No. No, I'm sorry. No, it's not happening. It's a no for me. All right, all right. I have no rebuttal to that. One. I just yeah, no. If you can, if you can take, if you can take this bear claw, Joe, I, I, there's nothing. That. I'm just saying, I, I appreciate my walls too much. You know what I'm saying? I understand <laughs> that vaginas have some snapback. You know what I'm saying? I know we got the snapback, but I still know. Like it just, it's painful. If I can't take up to a certain size of dick, why would I take a fist? 
Wait, there we go. Okay, yeah, we're, we're past the 15. Let's keep going. We got to check to see if we're going to get demonetized or not. Anyway. My bad. I'm not bad. I'm sorry. Maybe going to slide right out. That's an easy Clark, Clark says no Muppet action. <laughs> Ms. Jackson says, it's a no for f- no to fisting. No. Yes, it's a no. Spit in my mouth and I'm going to be on the ID network. Oh, Listen, snap. I endorse that message. Fair enough. I endorse Fair enough. It. All right. Was that your second one? I'm sorry. No, that was my first or one. You... Okay. What's your um, second one? The, only other, the other one is, you know, should be a no-brainer also. No scat play. And for those who don't know, Damn. scat play is... Um, the type of kink where having to do with uh, like fecal matter or feces of any kind? Mm-hmm. No, no, not happening. Oh, okay. for those who don't know, uh, uh, I still have never, I've never seen that video. I've, I've never, never seen, seen it. it. Not, it was hold on. Great. It was do good. not send me that video. I will don't block you that, when I want. Don't watch. post that stuff in the don't Discord. Say, don't do it. I think the go. biggest number they went up to was eight. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Ew, wow. Mm-hmm. All right. So now that we've talked about the bad stuff, let's pour a little sugar on top of that and tell them what we like. I'll go first to it again. <laughs> and uh, I'm actually uh, I'm interested in getting into bite play. I I like the primal aspects of it, scratching, clawing, not to the point of drawing blood. Although depending on how intense it could get, we could possibly go that far. Uh, but I'm kind of curious about it. I'm interested in trying that. And secondly, it's an oldie but goodie, uh, hard yes to me, is mirror play. I enjoy observing and forcing my partner to observe what's being done to them and looking at their reflection in the mirror. Okay, okay. you know. All right. Come through. Okay. You never, you never been in a hotel room and they've got the bathroom and the walls covering the bathroom and it's just you see yourself... And you see your calf muscle flexing. That's why you, why you, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, that's just me. No, anyway, I, will, I didn't know that, that was an actual one, play, though. I, yeah, like the mirror thing, I understand, but like I like um, when you're self recording. Like what, somebody got a GoPro on a stick or something, like hit. Yes. Okay. Yes. Get a GoPro. Um, I endorse <laughs> that. I want to see it in the moment, though. Like, I want to see, like, dear, f- dear future wife, yes. we're getting a mirror on the ceiling in the bedroom. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's a, a GoPro. Awesome. Get a GoPro on a stick or whatever. You're watching, you're recording it yourself, and you're watching it through it. It's just, like, a whole different experience. Yeah. Okay, so why not just have a combination of both? Just get the mirror. Yes. Get the GoPro. Both, both, both. Both is good. Mm-hmm. Both is good. Both is good. Both is good. All right. Okay, and why the, wait, question. Why the mirror on the ceiling? Like, I can see having a mirror in front of the bed or on the side of the bed or something like that if you want to see yourself or have your partner <clears throat> see what you're mm-hmm. doing. Like, because looking up at the ceiling seems like it's, it'll be too much. In the Cowgirl, moment. missionary, uh, spooning, you can look up and you see everything. Mm-hmm. You're laying out flat horizontally. Yes, you can. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm not saying it can't be done, know, but I, I, think, I think I think seeing myself from everybody everybody has a good angle, uh-huh. right? And I think seeing all my myself angles are good. All my angles are good. <laughs> all right, I think on. seeing myself straight up would be a little nah. <laughs> like I can do it from the side because I can see that arch getting. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And I can do it from like different, but like seeing straight up, I would lose focus. <laughs> That's just me, though. That's me, my slow behind. I would just lose focus if I was looking up and I'm a lot of crazy. That's what it looks like from there. Oh, yeah. All right. But I guess, okay. Okay. I guess I'll go for my uh, for my pro. Um, obviously, you guys know <coughs> to um, the punishments of kinds. So it would be BDSM and, you know, spanking and all those. I like to be tied up, um, whether that be with cuffs, um, chain, duct tape, rope, you know. You guys, if you guys were here um, last week, then you guys seen my BDSM test. You can see that I am mm-hmm. funny. So there, that explains that. And then, of course, like, you know, the paddles. Why I had the toy the week beforehand. You know, punishment is the best punishment, especially when you're a brat and you do things else on purpose just to get punished. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> everything up in here. Okay? I see. I see. <laughs> Hey, you know, guys, you have a picture. That's my dream, right mm-hmm. there. Like the whole like table. My house is gonna get crazy. Hey, everybody should have a playroom in their house. I totally believe That's that. But really, check really quick. Checking out the uh, comments on Facebook. I haven't had uh, 
YouTube loaded up yet. Uh, but her her Beto, uh, ew, no, he must be talking about this cat play. Yeah, um, Miss Payne, boy, you're not going to block me. I will block you. I will block you. Uh, uh, a lot of references to that. <laughs> yes, Miss Jackson. Once again, ID Network is a no. Don't even come at me with that gas. And Chuck Clark, biting is fun, but a partner hurt my feelings once when I bit deep on her left nipple and she was like, I have nursed children with these. You're going to have to bite harder than that. Well, no. okay, good, good job. Good job. Oh, good I job. thought she was going to be mad because that hurts. It does. Ah. It mm-hmm. does hurt to a point. It does. Well, it hurts. So bad. In in my experience, a lot of women who have who have nursed, they they actually get a little desensitized there, and they we some of them want to have the feel. Yeah. yeah. Um, going back to the comments, Miss Jackson, recording is always fun. Take turns holding the camera. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Herbido, evil grin, Miss Jackson. I love talking shit too. Yes, yeah, shit talking is a must. I you not you are not allowed to be quiet in my house. Yeah, it's you that gotta simple. Be, you gotta be talking some. Some yes. gotta be talking. <laughs> Yeah. And, and she's talking to you and chase i own a spanking skirt so i feel you yes yes yes, yes. Uh, i right. wanted one of those so bad love to see it i need it amazing They're amazing yes they are okay uh did we i think we hit every point of that oh so no we didn't no we didn't you were you just gonna skip over me you just not oh, gonna I'm let sorry. me do mine my bad i i apologize go right ahead <laughs> Gives me more time to pour myself another shot. Uh huh. Anyway, what is this number four, sir? <laughs> I'm off tomorrow. So what I don't know is I'm actually off work tomorrow. So your boy is uh, having fun. Love to see it because he never there. gets a day off. Too. Good job. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Okay, so Chase, you and I have a similar um, a kink in common, I should say. Um, so I am completely down for bondage. Tie me up, handcuffs. You know, I, I'm down with it. Um, it seems to bring a little more spice and elevate the pleasure a little bit more when you can't do anything. You're just at your partner's mercy. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, and some, <laughs> something that I want to try that I'm definitely considering is electric play. I think that's what it's called. Trey, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, yes. That was one of our toys from the back. That was basically electro stimulation. That was, yes. it's very fun. It's very, yes. And then they also have the Electrofly floggers when you get to that point. So if you enjoy the BDSM the and one. enjoy a little, yes, that's yes. The one. Check our that's kink the links on the Discord. Every, so every toy that we've, we've uh, mentioned, they, we do have the links if you're interested in person, purchasing them. They're all inside our Discord. Discord. So definitely check that out. I know I, I yeah, I'm not gonna take the last shot, I'm gonna chill out. Anyway. No, go and take it. <laughs> go and take it. If I have to drink, drink death in a cup, you, you can drink your last shot. Right, Cheers. Go on. Cheers. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so the electri- electrified flogger. It's in my cart mm-hmm. right now because I have to add that to the list. It is a must. It is a must. How much is All it? Right. How much was it retailing for? Um Shocking nuts. Oh, wow. Shut up, Herb. Anyway, uh, I have to look up. I'll look up the price when, when we get off the show. Because uh, another thing you may not, may or not know if this is your first time watching this, we have an after hours special where we talk in our Discord. You can speak to us directly, and we'll be able to go over that during that time. But let's okay. keep on going. Oh, thanks for the like, Amber. Thank you. Thank you, hey, thank you Amber. Wait, Herb said she's finna be put in a wrestling lock to get her nut off. Wow. <laughs> I mean, well. don't, 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 don't do it time. That's all I gotta say. I'm just saying, Herb, don't knock it till you try it. Okay. Chuck Clark, they're fun until you hit your teeth with the electro. You can feel it all the way down the nerves. I, Who is biting I, on the... Hmm. I, I, I've never done that. I've never done. I, I have not had personal experience with the electro with the flogger, but electro play. I've never put them in my teeth. Like that's. I think that might be. Going I'm not too a far. Masochist, so I'm not too. I'm not too not king. And we don't kink shame here. We don't kink shame. Thing. It's no, too far for me personally. It's not. Yeah, no. It's a no for me. It was pain on purpose, <laughs> like purposeful, like hurt pain. That's um. Yeah, no. There's a diff. There's a line. There's a line. Mm-hmm. You have to be careful of. All right, all righty. Okay. I'm sorry, real quick. Uh, Herb said, no knock. I'm actually for the shits. 
So. No. <laughs> Guy hurt. Anyway. Chase. <laughs> Go ahead. What? You're... You were... You're... Your thing you aspire to, your kink you aspire to. Right. Um, I, I guess I, I, I guess it's not like really a kink. I think it's something that you do do in the bedroom, regardless of the fact. But if I had this, I, I don't know how to say this without crazy, but um, I guess the hardcore feel like, like, you know, face sexing. Instead of talking, we're past yeah. the time. Oh, I just, I just, you know, I just, I mm-hmm. just wanted to, you know, like, to get more experience. That would be something that I'm interested in because I do do it, but like not to an extreme. So I guess like warming and learning how to coat and open the throat to be able to do that in a continuous basis because I do do it. Like it's not the guy doesn't usually do it for me. I'm usually the pusher, but I think that would be something that I'm interested in getting more exposed to. Mm, okay all right just have my personal experience avoid numbing agents because they can affect things in a negative way for the gentleman so yeah it'll it'll work for you you're able to get it you know if he can get there he can arrive on time sure but <laughs> if you're trying to do something afterwards yeah. he may be desensitized it's just a problem mm. that i have run into in my experience with dealing with that okay so uh, real quick i'm sorry my small piece of advice for that because this is something that i do Try doing it upside down. Oh, now you want to go upside down. Shut up. Yeah, see, that one <laughs> works. I mean, it's well, but it doesn't, because I usually am on the bed with my head fine. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to, like, uh, it's, no, I'm more of, like, a I sit down, they stand up. And, yeah, and, and honestly, I do it that way, too. But the reason why I say upside down is, for one, it affects your throat differently. So, you want to know why? Um, yeah. oh, you yeah. can definitely it's take more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can take more, and um, it's not as jarring on your throat as it would be if you were just, if he was standing. So it's not like were... going directly down, it's like sliding down. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and your, yeah, your esophagus lines up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and <laughs> my only other thing, if you do it that way, is to definitely that. practice that. your breathing. Anyway, yeah. It's it's something about, and this is I'm gonna dive into my own experiences for you. It's something about watching yourself go in and actually watching her esophagus bulge. Oh, expand. Oh yeah. That is one of the ah, chef's kiss right there. That's it's it's fun. Um what? Not the Burt Kreischer. Oh, face. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now uh, we, yeah, we definitely this crown got me going down. Guys, we listen. definitely delve deep into our kinks here. Um, we're going to try to keep things going as the weeks progress, but I I don't know just yet. We'll see how it goes. If you guys liked it, you liked it. Make sure you like, share, share, and subscribe to the show. Uh, but it's time to get into our just desserts because here, King is the way we're going to give you just desserts, and we're going to fill you up and edify you later. Uh, just desserts. Uh, we had a bit of a. This is why we talk about a discourse so much. So make sure you join it. We had a bit of a, an explosion of content, if you will, that on our Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. Where a little bit of a debate came up. Not even really a debate because most of the people that are there are kind of kinky like us. Uh, but the good old adage, women, do you want to be a Twinkie or do you want to be a Toaster Strudel, came up, and predominantly. A lot of women wanted to be strudels. So I'll ask our panel here today your preference between the two. Um, I... Jeez. Yeah, go ahead, Royal. You can have that. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> I'd say I'm down for both. I'm good with being a Twinkie. I'm good with some strudel action. I'm good either way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, what I will say about being a Twinkie, though, and I don't know if other women will agree with me, but... Please let us know in the comments. <laughs> Great. Y'all go ahead and <laughs> let me know in the comments whether or not you agree with me. But when you are a Twinkie, it actually kicks the pleasure up a notch. It feels so much better, and I don't even... I have no idea why, but it's like <laughs> once he hits that completion, it's like everything just warms up. 
and yeah, it, it's, it's dope for me, so I'm down me. either way. Horace Clark, shut up. <laughs> what? Just get to um, In the comments I'm... on Facebook, Chuck Clark said the people strudel. Not the people strudel. <laughs> uh, Amber said right. definitely both. Okay. Okay, right. Amber. You know what I'm noticing is a lot of the married women are enjoying both. Now, see, I think the question is more so what the husbands enjoy. But anyway, I digress. I'm down for both. I don't get to be a strudel as often as I would like to be, but I'm down for it. Okay. I'll actually go next. I'm sorry to cut. I'm going to go next because I got a feeling that... Our single asses are going to be on on the same page, but I don't know. So, uh, as a man, I prefer I prefer to make Twinkies. I prefer it. I know I I, I know it's wrong. I shouldn't do it because, huh, but most of the women that I've dealt with have that little thing inserted called an IUD, so I get to have fun. And Those are actually there's good. there is something that is. It's 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 carnally it's carnally developed in our it's 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 almost by it's biological it's biological sorry it's a biological directive that we have that we can't control and when we are in there and we're going forward we reach that pinnacle and we let go it is the ultimate relief we if you go ten years of your of your adolescence and you're only hitting rubbers and then you finally switch over. And transition to doing it raw dog shooting of the club it is the greatest feeling in the world and the added bonus to that is now you get to feel round to develop within you i feel that's, like men low-key have a breeding kink yo the cop yes i feel like yes. i feel like y'all oh, low-key have a breeding kink <laughs> um so janita said no more to toaster shoot or life um and herb says shoot the club up Chuck said, am I allowed to churn butter, though? I love me some uh, spread, spread country, country. Oh, yes. country rock. Yes. Uh, Junior said, now, nah, can I have him shoot the club up? But sometimes I like a little graffiti on my ass. Okay. Um, Herb said, less of a mess if you shoot the club up. That's a lie. It's, a, it's less of a mess for y'all. It it's not less of a mess for us. Yeah. I'm going to say uh, that for later. Yeah, it depends on how long it's been. Yes, that's right, Trey. Um, Chuck said, didn't we have this discussion before, Trey? Oh, okay. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, Herb said IEDs are a godsend. IUD. 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 And yeah, why do you put IED? IED, isn't that like a bomb that's, or something? That's <laughs> rubbers. But Hold yes, definitely. Yeah, that's what I thought. Chuck Clark said it's about, yeah, it's explosives. So about rubbers, real, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, I, my bad. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was going to say about rubbers, they have their place in the bedroom because you can actually get additives onto your rubbers. You can get ribbed for her pleasure, which definitely increased stimulation for her. I'm, I'm a giver. I'm a natural giver. I'm a soft dumb. I, I'm going to get off on getting you there and as many times as I possibly can. So, yeah, definitely. I wouldn't say fuck rubbers. They, they have their place in the bedroom. Trey, real quick, and I'm sorry, this is an audible and this has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But... Okay. <laughs> so, can you give us... What the difference the difference is between a soft dom and a pleasure dom? Because it sounds like you're kind of both. I I do straddle that line. A uh, soft dom basically we're more reserved. Uh, there there are there are the hard doms who are just on you on you on you. They're directive. They're straightforward. You're gonna do what I say. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I'm more laid back. I'm gonna observe you. I'm gonna watch what you do, and your consequences will be tallied later and you're not going to know when that later is it's more of a psychological game it's more of i'm playing a game with you i'm i'm <laughs> i am properly cultivating your pleasure not properly jesus you guys are <laughs> properly in everything <laughs> got to got to that's my statement put that on t-shirt said but. that ieds are imp improvised explosive explosive devices and then john said i guess it can be improvised explosive Sir, sir. Yeah, John yeah, Luther, it definitely can. Go, go, go sit down, <laughs> Miss Jackson. I'm a black ass lie. I'm sorry. I've, I've failed to remember a time where you've had the uh, the opportunity to have that experience with me. So I'm uh -oh. curious as to. This is crazy. 
crazy. Rick said, why are Rick you doing Williams, that voice? Why are you doing that voice, Trey? Because this is my motherfucking show and I do what the fuck I want. Oh, it's getting crazy. Oh, it's getting crazy. Right. Anyway. Hey. Okay. No more shots for you. Um, Who's Mongo? Hey, 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 hey. Okay, see, no, no, oh. no, no. No, no, no. Stop it. Anyway. No, Trey, who's okay. I will say. We don't know. No, <laughs> no, no. First, no. Royal got skipped. Then I got skipped. Everybody's skipping. Okay. I'm this sorry, Chase. She, she called an audible. She I did call it an audible. audible. That was my bad. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Please continue, Chase. Okay. So, basically, um, when it comes to Strudel or uh, Twinkie, I, I love a good Twinkie. Love a good Twinkie. Um, the reason why, Royal, it feels does happen is because when women climax in orgasm, the reason why we're doing it is because our vaginal actually um, massaging the penis to extract mm-hmm. the semen out of it for it to come up into, um, through our cervix, go into ovaries for it to make it produce. Um, so the reason why don't move, don't move, don't move. (laughs) Yeah. So the reason why it feels so good is because we're our bodies are naturally getting what it's supposed to get when we do reads climax. Mm -hmm. Um now even though I am a vaginal sensation kind of when it comes to climaxing, it is something about feeling the throbbing of the penis while it's ejaculating inside of you. Um it kind of has a power Stuff. Granted, he was doing some half or most of the work, but it's the feeling of the. It's just like, ah, uh, yes, I have you. Like, I have you. Like, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. A nice sensation. I will say the walk to the bathroom is the funniest um, shit ever. Someone actually recorded me in my crab walk. Oh, to the they bathroom. Didn't. And it was, did you really get uh, the Zoyberg? You really I get the did. I did. But this is the thing. It was for funnies. But it really was like, like they said, it's less cleanup. But if it's been a while, it, it really not, and it really isn't less not, cleanup to me. It's less, not less cleanup. It's so less I cleanup for them. Walk a walk a walk a to the back. Now walk a walk a walk. <laughs> it, it got a little crazy. Um, but I am a fan of uh, <clears throat> like uh, I think I believe uh, Janita said I am the feety. Um, not more so on my body, but more so on my face. I love shop. Um, to me, it's just like a nice take aim. Do what you got to do. Um, obviously, in that respect, you have to be somebody I'm um, like we together. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just laying no nigga bust a ball on my face or whatever. But um, it's just one of those things where it's just a, it's a nice time. And if you do do this type of play, if you do get shot up and like to be uh, twinkied up, make sure you have either an put it in, you have spermicide, or um, you take a plan B day plan b has been my best hey. so um just make sure you know all the dangers the pros and the cons that each and every single product um so that way you can make the correct choice like me per se i will never get d just had too many hard of people with it ripping into the uterus that, that ain't for me um so you know make sure that you're always keeping up to date with what you're doing and reading up on it um but yeah plan b within 72 hours it can save a life more specifically yours so, um, <laughs> so, but yes, I love uh, a shop, you know, uh, whatever. Okay. But this is an audible for you. All right. This is my first audible Ooh. for y'all. Okay. Here it is. Oh, for both of us. Okay. All right. Come on. Yeah. Okay. When was your first shooting up the club and what was it like? And was it a trap or an accident? Can I avoid this question? Y'all can go first. And then first. I ain't going no, first. I might actually get in trouble. No, I wouldn't get in trouble. Fuck her. Anyway, um, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Didn't mean to say that. Oh, so I'm sorry. Let me see the comments one um quick fast. Um Amber said, girl, that's the best. It's a have it, I guess. And, and then Chuck said my last ex actually Alex was uh definitely getting shot up in the club, patron and glass everywhere. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Amber said, uh yes, it'd be the longest bathroom walks. Uh Herb said coming in her, like, do you feel that's that family? Wow. Wow. Okay. Sir. Um, I'm still a face version. Get it, please. It's awesome. And it helps your skin. <laughs> um also, uh, they said we need that as a shirt. Twinkie life. We will make a shirt for you. Here we go. Here we go. We can get a t-shirt. 
That's like what? Two shirt suggestions? Yeah. Trey, yeah, what you get on your merch? What, what you doing? What you doing? Yeah, yeah, we got it. We're on uh, Teespring, so be on the lookout for that. So, uh, Trey, tell us about your first shooting club incident, if it was on trapment or by an accident. It wasn't it wasn't either, actually. Um, so, uh, I, 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 fuck it, it is what it is. So, if you've been following me on social media, you know I have a child. Um, me and my son's mother were together for about six years, and three years into that, we had a kid because one Valentine's Day, I decided, hey, I'm going to try this blue pill because I want to show up and show the fuck out. And uh, yeah, it was definitely not the right thing to do at 22 because you don't go down. And it was, it, the experience was life changing. I can't take anything about that. I can't take anything away from that. It was my first time actually shooting up a club officially and staying in there. And yeah, totally, totally, completely emphatically changed my life for the better because <laughs> I got a kid out of it. So, um, yeah, it was intentional and I was a little intoxicated, but I knew what I was doing. So I can't, I can't de deny that at all. So, but oh. since then, I've never been a big fan of the rubbers. I'll use them if they're like ribbed or whatever have you, or, you know, ha, huh, Trey, I fucking knew it. Ha ha ha. Shut up. Anyway. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I, it was Valentine's Day. That's why my son's a Scorpio. Because, yeah, that's why there's so many damn Scorpios running around here. But, yeah, that was my first experience with it. Oh. Oh. Okay. Royal. <laughs> All right. So, my first shooting up the club experience, I was very young. Um, I lost my virginity young. I was 15. Mm -hmm. But my first shooting up the club experience happened when I was about... 17 years old I was on birth control and I was you know with my boyfriend I don't know how long we were together but that was my long first enough shoot up the club <laughs> you said what long enough to shoot up the club yeah long enough to shoot up the club but that was my first experience so it wasn't anything really big you know what I mean like I was on birth control he asked me to do it and I was like all right okay, whatever and um yeah that's it Nothing special. Okay. I was just young. So, oh, okay. So mine was a trap, not to produce child, but just because I wanted it. So that that's what happened. Um, and uh, it happened two, two, no, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. It was basically a, uh, you know, we were just having a good time and uh, like ridden while sitting in a chair. Um, and so when the announcement came, which is one something we're going to get into next, um, Very nice. uh, when the announcement came, I usually, you know, obviously get up, turn around and suck it like a straw, but I decided to just sit and stay and he pushed with all his might and I stayed. Um, apparently, obviously the person's going to be a little upset, um, because they're like, whoa, we didn't agree or <laughs> here. But I'm like, nah, like we good, we're good. And right after that, it just, it it still stayed that way. So, you know, sometimes you gotta push a person to get into it, but I don't advise it. Obviously, I know this person for a very, 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 very long time. So don't be doing this to somebody that you just started talking to, just dating, whatever may have you. This is a person that I've known for eons, you know, make sure you're with a person and you know that you're not going to produce said child in entrapment. I, that's another conversation, but just make sure that uh, no child will be an entrapment. Yeah, just a quick caveat, too. I know that we don't have to tell you guys, but just to state this fact, please be safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know we're talking about shooting up the club, but STDs are a very real thing. So please yeah. make sure you know your status, make sure you know your partner's status, and shoot up the club safely. Yes, that's what I was saying beforehand. Yes, uh, I think was saying F the advocates for safety. Um, so whether that be a female con automatic condom that you can find anywhere, um, spermicide, whatever you find as your con, the cups that you can put inside, that's old. That's like way back in the day. But just make sure you're using protection in any sort of way with your partner. And your okay. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I got distracted by the comments. <laughs> oh, read that too much. What's happening there? All right, so 
Uh, going back up. Hold on. 17, someone in, co- in the college, not a trap. Uh, that was by Chuck Clark. Uh, Fast and the Furious reference for Trey Parker. Shut up, Herb. Anyway, Twinkie Life by Miss Jackson. Uh, Stable gang. <laughs> I try to fucking knew it. Um, the C. I knew a cougar. Chuck Clark. I knew a cougar. A cougar who who who'd ride like a cowgirl, pump me like a Texan oil derrick, then throw on some panties and be snoring. Good job, homie. All right. Wow. And Herb uh, shoot the club up with loved love. ones. Okay. With love ones. Wait, with loved ones. Dude, just stop. <laughs> Um, I know what yes, you meant, Herb. It's that, okay. I know what you meant, Herb. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I got to mess with him. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's it, like I said, it's, it's a biological imperative for men to to want to do that. We 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 rage against the rubber. We rage against it. But you know, you got to have a higher being of mind state and make sure that you're not all encompassed by it. It's <laughs> Herb said, asshole. Yes, I am. All right. Uh, but speaking of which. We were going to transition into the responsible party when it comes to this situation. Oh, before I do that, so Chase, you audible question. So you actively chose to stay until fruition? You chose to do that? What do you mean? To stay so, like Yes, when you said you were riding that individual, you chose to stay there. Yes. Knowing the consequences that could with be happening. Like I said, that's another conversation. That's why I was able to stay. Because cause you know I was about to... Uh-uh. Take them off. Get on your Take ass. the glasses <laughs> off. Yes. I know the consequence. I am I... a person that always puts out there, if you lay down with a person and you end up pregnant, you already knew there was a 50-50% chance it could happen. That's the only thing that can result out of it. And it's not a baby, it's a chance they will. Um, because of me and who, and who I am and knowing I chose that one because I knew they were in said baby. So therefore, I entrapped uh, education life. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, well, so when it comes to... So I believe that women have the advantage when it comes to orgasms. You guys have more fun with them when you have them. You, you reach that climax no matter how difficult. But when you do it, I feel like yours are bigger than ours. And, and they're, they're stronger. They're just more volatile than men's ours. Ours is kind of like the wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. But it leads me to my next line of questioning for you both. Uh, when it comes to the orgasm and these cream pie situations that we've been speaking of, is it the man's responsibility to announce when he's about to come? Or is it your responsibility to know when your partner, keyword partner, is about to come? I think when it comes to either male or female, because you have do have females who do squirt, so therefore they have to put the announcement out there beforehand, because if you've never been with this partner or this is your first sexual encounter, even if you told them you're a squirter, it could mean little... Like, it'd be, you could be a... Uh, what is those things called that shoot out water? Um, you could be a hydrate or whatever. whatever. You, it just be gushing gallons of water um or you could be like the little tiny square that just goes and it just falls right down to the sheets Orders um, gushes. yeah i think there should be definitely a discussion Rangers. beforehand Rangers. just so you know yeah. how each other climaxes so there's no big ooh surprise when it comes to it um but i think more than anything it's sexy to hear persons about two like i i love to hear i'm um, I'm about to whatever the oh shit like right beforehand. I think it's very sexy to hear that. I would think that for men is definitely way sexy to hear a female repeatedly say it than a male. Um, but for me, when I hear a male saying like I'm bus or whatever the case may have you, it gets me excited. It's see something or it's about to be poured on me. I don't know why I said poured, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, poured. Um, so, so <laughs> it's not a teapot. So, I'm like, gonna fill up this gallon for. I'm, I'm, I'm a couple in this weekend. I'm a couple in in the crown. Okay, let me alone. But yeah, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think it's sexy. So I believe you should definitely announce it because you don't want to end up like uh, Issa Rae in uh, is insecure. When Daniel uh, 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 was going to head to Daniel and then he shot it in her eye. So you definitely want some type of announcement because that was the first time that she had done it to him. 
and therefore didn't know his body rhythms like Trey was saying. Um, mm-hmm. But I also think that you definitely know someone's body rhythm when it comes to ejaculation. Royal, what do you think about it? Um, I completely agree with everything you said. Um, I feel like it is that person's responsibility to announce whether or not they're about to come. Um, and Johnita said in the comments, if you're in tune with your partner, you'll know. This is true. Okay. You, once you're in tune with somebody, you'll know their tells or whatever. You know when it's about to happen. Proper communication. (sighs) Royal, please ignore him. He put his glasses on. He put his low gafas on. I'm not, I'm not even paying. Just ignore him entirely, please. (laughs) So again, when you're in tune with somebody, you know what their tells are. And then, you know, at that point, you can make it a little more fun. You can can offer some words of encouragement, you know, nice little give it to me or whatever you want to say to encourage that climax. But if you're not in tune with this person, you're not going to know when they about to come. And I just feel like it's common courtesy for you to tell that person hey, I'm about to come, you know, then you give them the decision, the choice to, you know, mm-hmm. to say whether or not I'm going to stay and I'm going to catch it or I'm going to move out the way or, you know. Yeah. 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 It's all about respect at the end of the day. And I like Trey and Ray was saying, knowing a person's body movements definitely helps mm-hmm. in knowing, um, like Royal said, with the encouraging words. If you can feel that person is there, the encouraging words definitely make it a lot, a lot better. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I'm an encourager. Get to the finish I'm line, buddy. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna help you get there. Um, the toxic person of this uh, podcast. You can go ahead and say what yeah. you guys say. I gotta be Trey, toxic because I want to see you. Know what? What? The glasses no, on no, on no. Purpose. My name is Trey Proper, not him. You know, when you have the glasses on, on purpose, what a so smile. Just, so you know, I just want to be a little doing. intelligent. That's all. Anyway. Uh, as far as Issa Rae is concerned, first of all, Team Lords. Uh, secondly, every huh. single, every single woman out there, if you don't know this about your about any dude, there's a little tell that's about maybe two, two to three seconds before it goes off that the phallus actually flexes. It flexes and it pulses yeah. two times before it releases. Did you say phallus? So, Yes, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. You want me to you want to be crass? Some, no, you yeah, have to be jumps. Okay. <laughs> so the phallus pulses at least at least two. Sometimes it's a little quick draw, but if you feel that pulse, if you are down there giving a gok gok three thousand, that's your fault. You should be aware that it's going to happen. Either catch it and swallow it, or move out of the way. It's that I think simple. Grade it from three thousand. I think we're at five thousand now. Well, yeah, five thousand. Either way, if you if you are cultivate if you're cultivating an orgasm out of a gentleman's loins. Then, ladies, by all means, feel for the pulse because it's going. Besides his audible confirmations that he's arriving, he's also his dick is going to tell you. It's going to tell you bop bop and. Okay, it's but- literally a, a three piece combo. Sometimes no, I, well, I can't speak for every dude. I take that back. Yes. I'm not going to say that every dude is going to, you know, is going to signal that. But nine times out of ten, you're going to feel. You're going to see the balls jump. It's going to, it's bop, bop, and boom, it's going to come out. So Issa Rae's dumbass stayed there and looked at the hole and, ah, why can't I see? Because okay. your dumbass didn't move. <laughs> but to the left. Are you, you telling me that you guys don't jump? Like the dick doesn't jump more than once? Like if it feels really good to you telling me it don't like jump or y'all don't jerk or oh, whatever. There's, a, there's, but there's a difference between a, we, you, you know, so every, guys have Kegel muscles as well. So yeah. we are are involuntarily when we are about to come, it it flexes. It it, mm-hmm. it the dick will jump. You ever seen a dude make a, 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 a washcloth jump up and down? We yeah, can flex it on on command. Yes, but when we are about to arrive, it will literally flex twice. From okay, I can only speak for myself. It'll speak. Yeah. It'll flex twice, mm-hmm. and then it's off to the races. So you gotta be. Oh, you you do have to be in tune with your partner. Uh, and you do have to be aware of when they're coming. But if you are down there, first off, you should be using a hand on it, regardless of the size. You use a hand on so you can feel it. And the second hand should be on his balls because they tighten up before they release. Some men don't like hands to be involved, you know? So some of them just like to dick, you know? Um, But I think in any realm when it comes to a male um, climaxing, I think... The best way, I think, the way to tell is just off of their... I mean, obviously, breathing is part of it, but you have to keep the same... Because he can announce it, 
because I only mess with men, so I, this is all I know. He can announce it, but if you mess up the rhythm, it can change in 2.5 seconds. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, it can just drop, like, in, in seconds. So, um, obviously, if you don't want him to, you'll know ways to make him not. If he's about to, you can tell he's about to. Um, but I think everybody, like we all said, when you have a partner, um, I think we all know what flexes and muscles start to get tense or jump when they're about to start climaxing or start mm-hmm. the point of climaxing. Right. I agree. Re- real quick, not to cut anybody off, but I got to check on the comments. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, Ms. Jack, I'm, I'm skipping over you, Herb, because I don't care. Uh, Chuck Clark, I just read I just read body language. Amen. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Ms. Jackson, dodge, duck, dip, dive, oh, <laughs> dive and dodge. Oh, that's dodge. Bro. Yes. Um, now, definitely over 9,000. Wow, yeah, I need some head like that in my life. I uh, heard Emma Bart, vi- Emma Bart voice. It's your own fault. Uh, Jamaica, what's up, Cheesy? Uh, so does the vag- vaginal canal if he's in vaginal, sorry. Vaginal canal if he's in dentro. Dentro? And dentro. Okay. And I agree. That's and uh, Chuck Clark, amazing. of course, followed up with, yep, also your thigh muscles tense up and your taste slightly different right before it happens, which I completely agree because the flow changes in women. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 I agree. It's, it's your own fault. You should know. First off, you should be, you should be raw dog sucking a dick first time out anyway. You just, you know, throw someone at motherfucker. Like, you, you can't be sucking dick all willy nilly on your first night. That's just, like, I'm going to look at you like, all right, she a real freak. Okay, cool. I'm not going to look at you any less, but things will definitely change. Like your first time being together, she shouldn't be Felicia. What you saying? Raw is what I said. So Felicia would have found them. Yes. So then yeah, it like, wouldn't you, matter. You build up a little bit. Then it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. You can do what you got to do. But first time, just you know, raw back in it. That's that's like. Ooh. Okay, so let's okay. go to the second or third time or whenever y'all get a little more comfortable with each other. Y'all know each other's statuses and everything. Oh, you catch you catch the girl kids. Did she okay. still <laughs> don't? If she still doesn't recognize your tells, then it's not her fault if she can't you know realize I'm whenever you about to come. You should know is what I'm how, saying. All right, what's your, how are you going to know unless I she recognizes her I just tells. explained there are, there are physical tales that guys give off. And I'm speaking generally. I can't say I can't say all because I, I'm not every dude. But generally speaking, we do. We generally all men have kegel muscles. Our penises will flex and they will jump. Our balls mm-hmm. tighten up before release. These are things. Read, read Women who are unaware of this, read a sex health book. And we'll read, do your research. Follow up about, read about these things. Okay, so... Because we... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, we're not we're not that complicated. We're really not... Twist, twist, suck, there you go. You know, we're not that complicated. You know, figure it out, read up about us, and know the tales. Because if you're just raw dog sucking dick, then you don't know the tales. I think it's just... Kind of little, it's it's kind of hard for a female to give off signals of when she's about to, because... Like for males, it can change in like two seconds if you change the rhythm. If you like, you know, if you say fast, and you same pace. Like you know, it's just like one of those things where I think the rhythm has something to do with. It. Like you know, like you can always tell like when the person's about to, but if you change your rhythm up, it's not gonna. Right. Yeah. Hmm. And I mean, I just feel like, you know, like I said before, it's a common courtesy type of thing because I, I hear what you're saying, Trey, when you're saying that you know you could read up on a sexual health book and know that men have tells just like women have tells. But Mm -hmm. I feel like, especially when you're just now starting to deal with somebody, it's common courtesy to be like, Hey, I'm about to come. You know what I mean? Like it's, 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 I'm going to come three words. It's not a lot. (laughs) You're asking for it. That is actually a lot for us. us. Even when, even if you 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 get a well-placed, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? Anything. (laughs) Just let me know that you about to come so I can either, I can decide to either catch it or get out the way. Uh, Chuck Clark said, I've never come from head, but I think he's right. Uh, Janita said, it's like when you enter a up, up, down, down, left, right, A, B, A. Oh, so you play Xbox. So you play yeah. Xbox, I see. That's um, code or blood um, code for more combat. Herb said, if I say I'm coming and you still sucking, it's your own fault. Jamika says, if you're you really, say it. 
Yeah. Uh, Jamika said, if you're really in tune with your partner and you reach climax at the time, you cue. Mm-hmm. True. And Janita said, for females, it changed too. But the sensation before, especially with squirting, my body movement changed. It definitely does. It definitely does. It definitely does. Because there is a difference between having an orgasm and squirting an orgasm like two different like you can squirt you even have the orgasm mm-hmm. uh, and the squirting can happen and then the orgasm comes and like your body can move in different contortionate ways um, <laughs> stop having flashbacks on the show okay right. so he's like <laughs> he went into my a mindset he was like did you see the uh, smile though? Did you see the smile on his face? <laughs> Far away <laughs> look in the eyes. I remember that smile. <laughs> look, I mean, look, I I am a very imaginative individual. I'm an Aquarius. We 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 live up here. It is what it is. So mm-hmm. but yes, but it, when, when you do swear and when you have it, guys, it is two different things. And I will say that I think the best way to know when your body and what your body could possibly be situation is self-pleasure. Mm-hmm. You're going to know exactly how your body reacts when it, you come into contact with another person mm-hmm. and you do a lot of self-pleasure. You know, you you know exactly what if a certain vibration or thing or certain thing that you're doing, you can tell a person like, oh, I know this is happening. You know, I think that's why when we get older and we start actually having sex I- self-pleasure you know preteen time frame we can tell hey it's, it's about to happen it's about to go down so if you if you stay in this this uh shooting area i don't know what to tell you okay <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you all right <laughs> chuck clark says some of y'all are trying to crush skulls with your thighs when you come this is why upper body strength it is, is important sir. what it is <laughs> listen it is, listen what it is <laughs> and honestly it can it just happens it's like I feel like for men and women, everybody butt clenches. That's just what you do. You butt clench and you your toes it's curl. Not, everything, everything it just, is all and, boom. yeah. Everything yeah. enclosed. Um, it's because you're, you're feeling it from the top of your head down to your waist, and by the time it gets to that area, it's just it encloses. Um, unfortunately, some people uh, manner, and we do not apologize. It meant you a job. Um, and the same for when it comes to, like, you know, men to women. Like, I personally haven't been suffocated by thoughts by a man and when it comes to, like, giving head or something. Like that. Um, but I definitely have had my head stay there for until yes. they were yeah. finished. Yes. And, like, in the yes. back of the throat, like, just shoot automatically in the back of the throat to yeah. finish. I'm, and then, I'm, I'm dropping the kids off at the daycare. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're, that's the only time I allow, like, pubic hair dri- drive okay like is when you ask a couple you just push me all the way down it goes straight down the back of the throat perfectly fine and then i will continue whether you like it or not <laughs> all right i just i just had we have to talk about that at one point i'm gonna not gonna talk about it here We're, that, i just we have a new topic that you just brought up just write it down <laughs> put a pin in it oh yes oh yes well, i am um, that is that is probably gonna be coming up on the next episode of the, after the, um when a person is orgasm do you keep going or do you let them be it is mine i'm sorry 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 anyway i think we uh, all have the same mindset when it comes no, to that we, no, we all do. i think we all do <laughs> <laughs> you thought, it's like sir you thought i was done baby <clears throat> oh that's so cute that's cute ma'am Aww. i just worked hard for this it's mine and that's i want more cute. you thought i was done drinking my juice babe oh although i'm gonna that's say so as a person on the other side of that Okay, that shit drives me crazy oh, yeah. and not in a good that, way. That's horrible. That it's is horrible. horrible. It is horrible. It is it's horrible. horrible. I will not say that it's a fun time. It's it's I take horrible. it as a challenge. It's not fun. <laughs> it's horrible. You it's think horrible. you've won this it's round? Not fun. Won it's this not fun battle, at all. But you're not gonna win the war. It's and horrible. I think that's another discussion to even come up for on the men's side um, when it comes to circumcision. Um, if a uh, male is circumcised or not, it definitely plays into Activity. um so like you know whether you're a male size or not i've uncircumcised males definitely a way more sensitive so it's actually funnier to do it to them but oh, like okay. you know you just it's just I wouldn't yeah. Know. yeah so it, it, i mean i think that's something definitely american on, <laughs> on one uh on one. i mean this, <laughs> so uncircumcised guys are american too 
do. Yeah. So that's something we're gonna bring up on. I, okay. So we're American. He's saying American based, but there's a lot of American based people who have Caribbean parents who might not do. Yeah. So you know, there's a difference between that. So I think that's something that we're gonna probably bring up one at one point in time because I think that's something that's definitely to talk about. You know, I think a lot of people think uncircum like uncircumcised penises are like. Ew. But I mean, if you know how to clean yourself and you know what to do with the dude, just yeah, if you know the dirty right. dude, I don't understand what your issue yeah. is. But yeah. that's something to talk about because a lot of women don't when they find out that a dude is not circumcised, they're like they yeah, won't deal no. with it they won't at deal all. With America, it. fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, move on. Stop it. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. No, just like, just move it on. on. All right. We're so we out. have. I out. think we have. Well, I think we have definitely got <laughs> definitively into the cream pie conversation. Yes. Now, it's time to get serious. It's time to delve deep and get into our meat and potatoes of this episode. Um, recently, and I'm going to be going on a little bit of monologue here. Um, recently, I posted up on Facebook, on the fan page, as well as the Discord, asking uh, women, what is it that you want from men? What is it that you are looking for? What is it that you desire? What do you want from us? And... I have to say I'm a little disappointed by the amount, not the comments themselves that we did receive, but the amount of comments that we that we did not get. Because I feel like we are providing a platform where uh, everyone, men, women, gay, straight, whatever you have you, can speak freely and tell us what you want or t- tell the people who are out there who may be your future somebody, give them an example of what you want, what you desire, what you require, what your, what your standards are. And... I'm a little disappointed that people didn't chime in on that as much as possible. So, um, well, I'm going to... Oh, did you or, or did you get the comments from Discord? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I saw okay. the comments from Discord. I just, I, I, we, we, are, we are at 100 people so far, and we got maybe, maybe 20 in total. Um, I felt like, you know, and not to harp on it, but I, I do want to have a deeper conversation with you ladies and see... If we can kind of nail down what people want and what they're looking for, because we do talk about a lot of sex stuff. And and before you can even get to that dessert portion of things, you have to develop that relationship with an individual. You have to build that that foundation with them. And Mm -hmm. I'm simply asking, what's your foundation? What are you asking for? So if you could give us an example. Uh, Miss Royal, if you could go first, I understand and understand. Yes, you are happily married. (laughs) <laughs> but if you could temporarily take your mind out of that mindset, homie, don't worry. I'm she gonna put it back in her brain in a second. Take your mind <laughs> out of that mindset. Tell us what you would hypothetically want from somebody. Okay, so um, I know this question came up um, before because I was thinking I like you know I feel like we've had this conversation where at least women in my age demographic because I can't really speak for anybody younger or older than me, but you're looking for loyalty. You're looking for stability. You're looking for drive. I feel like I've said this before. You know what I mean? This That ambition. Mm-hmm. You're looking for an understanding partner. You're looking for love. You know what I mean? Somebody who's going to love you unconditionally and vice versa. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, that that's pretty much what I can think of off the top of my head. Um, okay. Jay's, do you have an opinion? Um, I, I, like, we've had our private discussion about this before. I think um, women almost have the same type of idea of what they want from a male. Um, so, Trey, if you don't mind, I'd like to um, what women responded with. Um, so, we have one that said, the only things I really want are us. I just want to live a simple life. I feel like arguing is not going to lead to sex. I'm not the W type, so I don't rec- dinners or random gifts and stuff like that. I mean, if he wants to, he can, but meh, all that means nothing to me. I would feel bad if you doing all this and I wouldn't have even thought about dancing you. I just want to chill, be at peace, cuddle. Another one said, I guess a family man who is silent type, but someone that when the conversation is intellectual, or when he needs to express his feelings and thoughts about the relationship or whatever, even if he just needs someone to bounce ideas off of. Someone who has a decent relationship with his family and to a point 
where he hasn't dealt with any traumas that he might bring into what we are trying to build. Uh, and that's literally all of me, <laughs> like, in a bunch. Mm. Um, and it kind of mixes in what Royal was saying. Um, like, you know, someone who's going to lead our family, lead our home, um, give me something, like, you know, to lean on. You know, mm -hmm. I, and we, I think we talked about, but I think a couple of weeks ago where it was like, you know, our women becoming the new man, our men becoming women. We still want that leader. We still want that person to be in the in the proper position, in the proper, oh, in the proper, proper, <laughs> in the proper position, position um, to take hold and lead our family to, you know, victory, to make sure that our goals are attained and that we're life. Me personally, it's time and communication. That is mm -hmm. literally it. And I don't know if that's because my standards have dropped so low because of dating experience that I've had. And I think that sometimes that can be affected by that. If you haven't had this dating um, experience, your standards and what you want from the opposite sex or the same sex can differ off of that. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it's just time of communication. Make sure that you're showing me that you're a, that you won't be around, that I'm somebody of importance to you um, mm -hmm. and that you're open to communicate with me. You know, right. it's 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 part of my five love language, and I'll talk about it after Trey. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Right. Okay, and right. you know what? I just want to add a comment to, and and this is kind of I feel like it's going to be delving on topic, but when um, that statement about not having any traumas that you, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I don't know if that's realistic, yeah. honestly, it's not. especially yeah. not. When you're dealing, I'm going to say specifically for the black community, when right? When you're color. in the black community, you're you're, you're going to have some traumas. You're born with trauma. You're yeah. born with trauma. You're, yeah, you're, born, with trauma. you're yeah. born with trauma. Yeah. So I don't. I think it's not realistic to ask someone to not have any traumas. I think it's more realistic to say that you're working through those traumas. You know what I mean? And you're working on your communication and maybe you know, seeing a therapist or whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that you're in the right position to be in a relationship with someone else. Yeah. That's totally um, true. Chuck said, when you ask a woman what she wants from a man, she writes one piece. You ask what she brings to the table. It doesn't cover the back of a stamp. Kevin Samuels. will bring the toxicity into the chat. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, so we're not so going to quote him. It's uh, he already did. She already read it out. So it is what it is. I was going to do it if they didn't do it anyway. Um, but I think that is I think there's some validity to that statement, though. I think that there are uh, uh, not all not all. Not... If you put them fucking not all, on. not all, not all. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I, I think that there is some validity to that statement. I think there are a lot of women out there who throw out a lot of different buzzworthy words. And they all sound good and dandy, but when you get down to it, <clears throat> what are you getting in return for for your investment? And and I, I'm not speaking because I've said this before on the show. I do not consider myself a high value individual, not a high value. Um, personality wise, I'm high value. Monetarily, not so much. Not even gonna think about that. There's no point in me pretending. But um, when it even when it comes down to my level, when I am courting someone. What is it that I'm getting out of this situation? What is it that are you are you providing me besides some box? To put it simply, like, yeah, this so is why I have my What is it that you're looking for? Well, what I'm looking for, and I've stated it before, is I'm looking for a genuine partner. I want somebody who's going to be loyal. I want somebody who's going to be consistent and also be, they're going to stand up and be next to me and be about me. Don't be looking for the bigger, better deal. Either be here and be here real with me and grow with me. And I can show you my worth and where we can go. And you show me your worth and where we can go. And mm -hmm. we build up together and we make something. Otherwise, if you're looking for the dude who's making $100,000 a year, shorty, I'm not it. That's not me yet. I may be there one day. I'm 36, but at some point it might be till I'm 45. Who knows? Who knows what happens? But if you're not going to be here with me right now, I'm not going to waste my time with you. I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to show you the romance. I'm not going to give you the extra trick because, and I'm going to toot my own fucking horn here. I'm a very charming individual. I'm a cunning linguist and I don't look too bad myself if I say so myself. So you can be here with me and help me build as we grow and show where we got to go. 
or keep it moving. You'll just be a you'll just be a box because you're not doing anything to show me why I should waste my time on you. You're not doing anything to show me why I should invest my time in you. Okay. You've okay. brought me nothing. I want a guy who's gonna be loyal, and I'm a loyal dude. I don't cheat. I've done my dirt in the past, but I'm 36. I ain't got no time to be playing around, running the streets, all this. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? I want more kids. Yes, I'm a family man. I love my son. I have one child. Everything on me is on my sleeves. Okay. What more do you want? We also uh, asked the question in the Discord, uh, men, what do you want from women? So since Trey picked that up, I'm going to run through a few of them. As Rick said, someone I can have fun with who just have to imagine my energy. Also, no focus someone sexual and funny, a soulmate. Um, and then we had a different kind of answer. Um, said uh, well i'm not one of the marrying type. i'm not gonna tell you that when you start asking where you see us in the future ma'am right here <laughs> but i honestly don't know what i want i just want someone i can vibe and chill with someone that isn't too clingy because i love having my space and someone who has a good sense of humor and can be goofy when the time calls uh i believe we have another one but um, you know you guys get the uh, premise of it just I guess uh, men want, oh, one more says, I want a woman who needs to be truly bu- to truly build. I want someone who believes in communication, a woman who is truly ready to build a family and a future. Something on the same record, what, Trace? Yeah, I mean, it's really that simple. Like, we, I, I do agree with, uh, with with a lot of the guys who said, what the, <laughs> excuse me, I do agree with, with, with a lot of what the guys said in the Discord. Um, we, we, we're, we're simple, we're simple beings. We're not difficult to please. And it is a little frustrating when all I hear is I'm the fucking table. I'm like, that's not what I'm going to hear. Tell me why I should be invested in you. Um, checking the comments. I don't Oh, Chuck Clark says, I don't agree. I think it's just hilarious. Shit. I'm homeless. I can't be too choosy. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, um, and John Luther Trey singing a Latin. I was singing a Latin for real. I can show you the world. Roy, I'm looking for you something to say. What was uh, what's on your mind? I, know, I just had a question. So, mm-hmm. and again, this is something that we've discussed before. Mm-hmm. Um, and to quote your boy, uh, what's his name, Kevin Samuels? Mm-hmm. When is it that you need to adjust? the type of woman that you're looking for? When is it that you think you need to adjust your standards if women are not, the women that you're dating are not meeting the standards that you're putting out there? For me personally or in general? I mean, for you personally, since we have Me personally, I don't, I wouldn't adjust the woman that I'm, that I'm pursuing, I would adjust myself. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm currently doing personally. I'm adjusting myself. I'm working out. I'm doing what I need to do. I'm eating better. I'm trying to change different aspects of my life so I can get a different caliber of woman. Mm-hmm. If, if if what's available to me is not what piques my interest, then I need to change something about me because I'm the common denominator. Right. And I feel that I feel that it should be the same thing on the women's side. I, I've said it on the show before. Don't be the person they don't want. Become the person they can't have. And I am becoming the person you can't fucking have. Yeah, it sounds arrogant, but I'm coming from a place where in my, personally, I'm in my mind, I didn't like where I was. And I am building myself up to be a person that I actually enjoy being. Mm-hmm. So get on the level. <laughs> it's really that simple. Catch up. I Tell think me why I it, pick you. When it comes to um, what you want out of people, I think it always lies into love language, what you speak, what you need out of the person we all know five love languages that have been put out there and people talk about continuously words of affirmation quality time physical touch access and receiving gifts um to me personally like i said quality time minds of words of affirmation physical touch and that's it i don't have to receive i mean it's nice to receive gifts but you spending time with me a gift mm-hmm. you know because a lot of people <laughs> are so like we we're not gonna pretend like we don't live in a you know, we all have multiple different things. We all work nine to fives. We all have products that we do on the side. We all are different. Pro- we have all have different podcasts that we're a part of. We have some have children and everything like that. So you take all of that and you split it across the week. What time do you have to yourself? So the time that you're going to use and you're going to spend it with me, I feel kind of special with that. That's a gift to me, you know, and that's 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 how I feel with that. Um, and that's what I say. Communicate. 
worth of affirmation. I think that some people do need that, like, you know, reassuring, like, oh, you look like this. I feel like this about you. And that's just like who I am. And that's what I expect out of a man. You know, obviously we all credentials. Oh, he has to have a personality, characteristics. Uh, for me, he has to be a man of God. Like, you know, different things like that. But in, in, in the end, what is it really that you want out of a man? Like, you know, is is it okay if he does one thing but not the other? And vice versa for, for a male. You know, I think that's when you kind of, like my therapist says, write down 10 things. You if that person is someone in your life right now, pursue it. If it's not, seek it out. Um, you know, and if you're currently right still write the 10 things you want in a partner if that person isn't meeting up to those 10 things that's a conversation you need right you need I'm to writing that with, down right now because i yeah, that's that that was a that was a word right there <laughs> start talking to your partner because maybe that person was those 10 things how many months or years ago you met but if they're not current with those things you need to start having a conversation mm-hmm. and i think sometimes we're afraid to have those conversations we're afraid to have those discussions because we don't want the outcome to be we're no longer or we're not talking anymore. But if that comes into a resolution of me and you both are happy, living our lives separately, you got to do what you got to do. But uh, just knowing what you want in a partner is what you really need to get into. Realistically. Realistically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Real um, quick, just uh, you guys. I was it. probably going to say the same thing you were going to say. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, I was just going to say that uh, Jamika said that your mic went out when you were um, talking about the 10 things. If you could repeat it for her, she was saying. I think, oh, so basically what I was saying is the 10 things, like my therapist has said, 10 things that you um, want in a partner, um, that if that's in your circle, if you have that person around, try it out. Seek it out with the person. See if they're available to want to talk to you. Um, If not, seek it from a whoever you can. If the person holds it, if they don't, whatever. If you have a current partner right now and you're writing the, no matter how many years you have, if they are not meeting up with even half of that list, and that doesn't mean that you have to break up, but just have a conversation with them because that means they're not up to your standards anymore. Right. Mm. Yeah, you got to do your pros and cons list. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite things to do in a relationship is do a pros and cons list. Like if things are not working out or things are a little rocky, you have to you have to self evaluate. You have to evaluate the situation, yeah. the individual, mm-hmm. and yourself. What are the pros about me and the cons about me? What are the pros about this relationship and the cons about this relationship? Yeah, really sit down and take a realistic view. Yeah, and I'll weigh it. And, you know, have the conversation. Have their partner do the same thing. I mm-hmm. totally agree. I just because... do a check-in. Do I do <laughs> a check-in. If I'm in a relationship, I do a check-in every three to six months. I know that makes me quit. But it's nice to do that. Like, some people hold on to stuff that they didn't say or mention. And it's going <clears> to <throat> come up later on <laughs> when you guys are in a fight and it's going to turn into a really explosive thing. And mm-hmm. you don't want that to happen. Yeah, so, and so like, I was there. Uh, like Trey Popper says, you have to have proper communication. There you go. You're learning. You're especially, learning. especially, I want to say, and it's speaking from a married standpoint, because it's not so much, you know, the pros and cons list or even the check-in. You know what I mean? It's like constant communication all yeah. the time, and you know, people just like with any other relationship, marriage is work. You know what I mean? So it's like you have to be dedicated to making your relationship work and surviving all of the, the, you know, turmoil and things that you can go through because things attack your relationship. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you have to be open to communicating with that person. So it's not just a check in. It's just, you know, talking, period. Yeah. About everything. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, was there anything else you guys wanted to add to the "What do you want?" conversation? Any final Tell thoughts? Us what you want. Tell us what you want, please. I don't got time to be guessing, figuring. Tell me oh. what you want. Tell me what you <laughs> like. <laughs> Communication. Just tell me. Fair I ain't mind readers. Dare, yeah, dare I say? Dare I say you're going to set the proper expectations? All right. Okay. So, final question of the night. <laughs> don't 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 roll your eyes at me, Joe. You know it was coming. If you don't know by now, I'm gonna shove. The, I'm gonna crowbar that in. Shout out to her. I'm gonna crowbar that in every chance I get. Anyway, listen, final listen, question listen. Tonight. We didn't give you enough proppers tonight, okay? Don't you think so, not, Chase? Not I think nearly, we gave him enough not, proppers for tonight. Not nearly. Just nothing can't remotely. Drink, so it's okay. Pour is more to drink. Oh, this after hours is gonna be fun. It All is. Right, um, 
Yes, follow us on Discord, King Joy Podcast, and that way you can join yes, our Discord we're have after the hour. Not have to care. All right. So, uh, final question of the night. Uh, this kind of spawns into the indecisiveness conversation. So, first question for you all: Who do you think is more indecisive in a relationship, men or women? I'll go first. It's y'all. We doing this for real? We had we this conversation this. outside of the show. We gonna have it on the show too. Yes, yes, yes. I gotta, I gotta kill five minutes. Come on. All Come right, on. let's go. So, this is my thing, and this is what I told <laughs> Trey Proper. It is not about the woman being indecisive. We mm-hmm. are steady making moves, okay? We are in charge, especially if you have kids. You're in charge of the kids. If you're at work, you're in charge of making decisions at work. People might have their own business. There are stuff, there's stuff that, we, that we're doing. So mm-hmm. we want our man to make the decision. Even if we're talking about going out to eat, okay? You just pick a place and I will find something to eat when we get there. That's yeah. it. Pick it. That's Pick it. it. That's it. It's not even That's about being it. indecisive. It's about I'm making so many decisions during the day. No. I don't want to make none when I'm at home. Period. Thank you. Period. That's <laughs> it. And then, and then this is another thing. This is another thing. Even for a, for, for a woman who doesn't have children, I do uh, I don't. Just say women, it. Women more likely have positions where there's more communication than a male position. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what I mean is like telecommunication, computer working, um, even in I like, you know, even in I that we have a in all day. We talking all day to people. All day. All right. So when I come home or whenever me and you meet up and you're like, well, what do you want to do? I don't want to think because I've had to think for over a hundred people in that whole entire day. I had to think for those people. I don't want to think no more. So when you're asking the question, because there's a lot of skits, short stories, and everything that come up on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram of women who, like men asking women, what do you want to eat? What do you want of this? What do you want of that? We can, I mean, yes, there are women out there who are very, 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 very just like, they aggravate me, okay? They make the testosterone in my body go on a thousand, okay? Because it, they just aggravate me. Make a decision, baby. Make a decision. But like Royal said, we want you to make a decision for us too. So if we're yeah. saying, like, if you're saying, if you're giving us options, and I say, nah, I don't know about this one, blah, 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 just say, we're going to ask. make it work. Facts. All right. Cool. That's I guess it. That's what I, I have to do. Figure because it out when I get there. Like, I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to have to get the two for 20. Cool. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, you know, but um, I don't, I don't know. When it comes to men, I'm not going to say y'all are indecisive. I'm just going to say sometimes y'all just don't know where to go. And it's like exhausting to lead you there. I think like sometimes you don't sometimes you don't pick up on stuff. I think that's the mm-hmm. thing. Women might be more indecisive and men just don't pick up on. Stuff. And it, th- that's the most aggravating thing in the whole entire world. Is either you either you don't pick up on them or you know we trying to tell you to pick up on it and you just choose not to. <laughs> also, I think it might be some it. fear to that of making the wrong decision. Decision, yes. I think that's my, what it may be. Like they want to make the decision for us, but they don't know if it's something that we're going to want, something that we're going to like, or whatever. So they're afraid that they're going to make the wrong choice. That's what yeah. I feel. I think. Then also, there was a clip. Uh, if anybody watches Blackish, it's their last season. Sad, sad. Um, there was a moment where Bo and Dre were very, very, like, almost divorcing. And <laughs> there was a moment, if you guys know Dre's character on there, he's very, like, it's me, 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 me. I am important. I am who is the number one in charge. Mm-hmm. And they were arguing, and they had an argument about how Bo picked a movie, and Dre was like, this was a trash behind movie. And he held it over her head for months because she chose a trash behind movie. I think in those incidents, it's kind of one of those things. If we finally do choose and then you get there, you're like, why would you even choose it? It's like, it's our fault. Like, you want us to be decisive. And then when we, now it's our fault that we chose it. Right. So when we make the decision and you don't like the decision, then what? Yes. Yes. So, Trey, go ahead with your talk to the glasses. Go ahead. Matter of fact, the next time I see you, I'm going to hide them bitches. You understand? You're not allowed to I, I on the show no more. I need my glasses. You can't, you can't take my... Anyway. So, 
on, with girl. all that that you guys just spilled out into the airways, I have one thing and one thing only to say. <laughs> so this some means shit. that if, <laughs> if you want us to make the decisions, if you want us to be the deciderers. Deciderers? Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling up. Okay, a, Webster. PW. Anyway, if you want us to be the deciders, then that means you have to be submissive and follow our lead. Excuse me. Sorry. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. You mm-hmm. need to be submissive and follow our lead. And where we decide to go, because nine times out of ten, men know what they want to eat. We know where we want to go. We know what movie we want to watch. We know because we decide. So that means you have to take a back seat, sit in the passenger seat, and not complain, be word or moan while we make our decisions. You're going to have fun with us. You can't tell me that some of your best relationships the guys have taken you somewhere and it's been a total disaster every single time. When we make a decision, just go along with it. Be easygoing. Have fun with us. Come along. When a guy extends an out and invites you to go on a date, have an open mind. Just enjoy yourself. But sit your ass down, shut the hell up, and have some fun. I'm That's sorry. Okay. Chuck said, "Fine, Dana is at the gun range. I won't do. I won't do gun range." There you I'm go. Like, there you go. I th- I'm just against guns. That's just personally me. But, but I, I, will throw some axes. I will throw some axes. I love throwing some axes. Um, Herb said, "Capping asses." What we capping, babe? What we capping? Um, yeah, said, oh, said, that's the other thing. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Herb said, "Don't blame us for Dre's pettiness." Okay, thank you for knowing Black is Dre because. He's like, uh, oh, he makes men seem so terrible. He like, does. Yeah. His character makes men seem unbearable in itself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said, to answer that properly, quote, 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 quote. Properly. It goes both ways, which is why communication you, is important. Man. Yes, sir. Jimmy can we, said, oh, can we give him a, can we give him a round of applause? I'm sorry. Can we just give John Come Luther on, a round John. of applause for Come that? On, Good job. Good Come job. On, uh, but yeah, so w- like I said, there's a difference. So like, okay, so just like Trey, want to do this thing w- that we say, and now you want to do this thing. Sometimes it's it's one of the others. So, like if her back to me with like, oh, we're gonna go to the gun range, and like, mm, personally, me no guns, but I'll throw some axes. It's still violent, and we're still doing things that are very violent. Just one is quicker than the other of, of, of when it comes to violence, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I'll stop I'm, you right there. I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm sorry. And Chuck actually pointed it out in the comments. I'm sorry, I gotta say this. This is a perfect example of what I'm saying. You said, I don't do guns without any, with, with total conviction, without even, I'm not, and I'm assuming that you've never been to a gun range, you've never fired a gun. I'm assuming that I could be, wrong. so you have. So, but you've never been with that. Like, if he was to take you, you've never been with that individual. So if you just, if you just fell back and followed his lead and let him direct you, and let him show you possibly a good time. You might be able to change your perspective. Oh. No. But if you sit there stuck in your ways, like, no, I don't want to go, I don't do that. No, 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 no. It could just be that's, a that's, legit that's fear of guns. What I'm saying is I'm setting my boundary and I'm letting him know. I personally do not believe in having a gun, gun, sh- gun that is not. Yes, I have done it before, that that was a bonding time with my brother, and he wanted me to do it as a sister. And I'm talking about me as a person at this point in time. But if I'm setting my boundary and I'm saying, thank you for suggesting that, but I personally don't do guns, then that is when the next step comes and says, okay, so what are you comfortable with? Right. And I'll say, oh, I've done throwing axes. I would love to go through and do an action thing of throwing axes. Or if I don't feel safe doing that, I would love to go do a putt-putt or something like that. I'm not mm-hmm. saying I'm shutting down your active date. I'm saying that is just one thing I have a boundary against. And if you cannot respect the boundary that I have set, then, baby, you do not need to be talking to me. And what's That's that? Totally is fair. that setting a proper expectation? That is setting a proper expectation, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna officially be toxic on this one. You should still follow the man's lead and see where it takes you. But I will I respectfully I, I will fall back on that one. If you have if you have your own proclivities about gun ranges, I totally understand. I'm not gonna force you to go to a gun range, but I'm saying that is an example of you you having a past experience. And not being open to something new happening. You're not being, you're totally closed off from it. You're totally like, nah, I don't do that. And I understand and I respect your decision. You're totally entitled to do that. 
But that is an example of what a lot, not all, not all, not all, a lot of women do in a plethora of different situations mm-hmm. where you're closed off to the possibilities. You're closed off to a ex- new experience with a new person. And, and you allow that to affect the possibilities that could happen with this new individual. So if you, if, if, hypothetical, if you were to open yourself up to a date with somebody who says this, you might have a new experience. It might change your life. It might change your mind. So all I'm saying is be open to the possibilities. That's all I'm saying. Tuck said, I dated two people that said the same thing about guns. They changed their mind at the range. Said Chuck. Um, and Herb said, fair point. Chuck also said, side note, throwing, I only have to buy bullets. I mean, <clears> you, can't pick, you can't reuse the bullets. Um, Chuck also said, that's different than I'll throw... That's different than I'll throw axes. Thanks, Chuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and Chuck says, apology, I didn't know you had. So, you see, it's communication, just like John it Luther. Is. My man, John Luther said. It is, it is. I gave him his round of applause. Um, so, and, and uh, like I said, it's totally up to you. I do agree. You know I preach communication all day here. That's what I love. I love communication. Mm-hmm. However, I'm just saying, you might have to do something different. Now, to, to answer Jamaica, uh, what... What about someone who is afraid of guns, someone who has had a traumatic experience with guns? Does that not matter still? I'm not saying that it does not matter. What I'm saying is, first off, if you have a traumatic experience, first things first, mental health is important. You should go talk to somebody about that. You shouldn't just be sitting in that situation. You should be just experiencing your past experiences and letting it affect your future and affect your present. Go talk to somebody before you put yourself out there and try to go talk to somebody in a dating situation. You shouldn't do that. You should go talk to someone professionally. Not us, not your friends, not your family. Go talk to somebody professionally about that because unfortunately you live in America. Guns are a big part of our country. They're everywhere. I could go get one tomorrow. I could go get one tonight, technically. It wouldn't be legal, but I could go get one. But my point is, these traumas, these traumatic things that people have gone through, and I'm and I'm not speaking from a, a, a high tier individual. I've been through traumas. I've gone to go talk to people, and I've helped my I've tried my best to help myself get over it. I'm still talking to people about it professionally. So if it's something you're going through, go talk to somebody before you step out there on a date that could potentially turn into I'm scared of guns and we're going. I, I'm, I have I have a phobia. I am terrified of snakes, and no doctor has been able to help me. So don't ask me to go to the zoo and go to the reptile house. We're not doing it. It's that simple. I would, mm. but that's a trauma that I have to work on. So, I, but I also set that proper ex- expectation. We know what's going to happen, and we work around it. But I'm talking to somebody to help me get through it. I have things that I use to try to fix me in my mental space. Mm-hmm. So you got to do that before you jump out here in the dating market. If if that's a major thing, is all I'm saying. But like you said, communication is a big thing. So if you have fears, if you have traumas, phobias, what have you, you should be talking to your partner about that anyway. So your partner knows, hey, maybe Mm -hmm. I won't plan a date around the reptile house or the gun range or whatever the case may be because my partner doesn't like these things. Uh Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you know, you should force that individual. I see it in the comments. It would never force that force that on someone. No, I'm not saying to force it. I'm saying you should you should get your mind right so that you can go do that. So you can go try and step you put your put your pinky toe out there in the water and just try something different because it might change your perspective. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But first and foremost, go talk to somebody. Go get some help and figure it out. And Herb, you, you can eat a bag of dicks because <laughs> you're talking about snakes. Anyway. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure, as always, here on Kinkazoid. We are nine minutes past the hour. <laughs> I think we have to wrap up here, and we will see you guys in our Discord. Um, if anyone wants, they can drop the link in the Discord so we can get more people over there if you want to go it. Uh, but, yeah, we got to roll. We got to roll. Yes, I'm off tomorrow, but I am going to continue to partake in this tasty beverage. So, I think I might geez. need another one of these. Death and oh, you finished it already? Good job. I'm done. Was that four shots for me? Yeah, I am. I, yeah. Yes, this was yeah. a great episode. Thank you all for joining us. As always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, whether you're on Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube, whatever have you. Find Kinkazoid, like Kinkazoid, share Kinkazoid. And if you want to have more people joining the conversation, share it to them. Just send it to them in a DM. Mm-hmm. Um, not, 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 not crazy, but yeah. 
wuss. <laughs> but snakes are awesome. Anyway. Her, <sighs> you had so much to say in the comments today. Bring that ass in the Discord, okay? We are eight episodes in, and I have yet to see you in aftercare. What's wrong? Exactly. You ain't joined in. So, um, and, and ladies and gentlemen, if you are joining Discord, I can only ask that uh, please be respectful of one another. Yes. Let somebody finish their statement as they're talking. I know not everybody is professional talkers like us. Yeah, I'm speaking into existence because we all will be professionals by the end of this shit. Anyway, um, be respectful. Let somebody finish their statement, and then we can move forward. Uh, but we're going to get up out of here. We're going to get on the Discord. We're going to drop the link in the comments if somebody can, yes. and we'll holler at you over there. there. I, I, dripped the, I dropped the comments on the YouTube and the Facebook page, so join us in here. Make sure you're following King Soy Podcast Instagram and on our Facebook if you're already making sure and follow us there. You can uh, so you, uh, notified if you hit the notification of whenever we go live. We just want to say thank you guys so much. We are this eight episodes deep. We're almost at ten. It's so crazy to me that we just started this. Um, so thank you guys so much for all the love. Um, and make sure you guys follow Trey at Trey Proper oh. everywhere. Okay. Catch my pearls. L on Instagram if you don't. And then you can follow me at Kim because it's true on Instagram. And if you want to, you can on our Instagram podcast. That is where our tags are. So if you don't know the name, click on the picture. Our tags are within the picture. Thank you so much. And we will see you in aftercare, baby. All right. Nice we out. Out.